Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson for Catholic News Break. Here's what's happening this week in the news. We begin with news from around the country. A Vatican congregation confirmed a second miracle attributed to the intercession of Blessed Mary and Cope of Molokai, thus clearing the path to her sainthood. The final step for her canonization is the approval by Pope Benedict XVI. The Vatican decision was announced by the Sisters' Religious Community, the Sisters of St. Francis of the Newman Communities in Syracuse, New York, and by Honolulu Bishop Larry Silva. Mother Marian, who worked as a teacher and hospital administrator in New York, spent the last 30 years of her life ministering on the Hawaiian island of Molokai to those with leprosy. She died on the island in 1918 at the age of 80. The first miracle required for her beatification was the medically inex unexplainable recovery of a New York girl who recovered from near death after prayers were said to Mother Mary Ann. The only known detail about the second miracle is the recovery of a woman expected to die. Doctors were amazed at her survival and declared her recovery inexplicable. The Sisters of St. Francis will not discuss details of the second miracle until after the Pope's proclamation of Mother Mary Ann's sainthood. In news now from the Vatican, Pope Benedict XVI has named a replacement for the Archbishop of Guadalajara, Mexico. Rome Report says more on this new appointment. The city of Guadalajara in Mexico has a new Archbishop. It's 62-year-old Cardinal Jose Francisco Robles Ortega, who up until recently served as the Archbishop of Monterey. He will replace 78-year-old Juan Sandoval Iñiguez, who resigned because of age limit restrictions. Cardinal Ortega was born in Mascota, Jalisco. He became a priest in 1976 and a bishop in 1991. He's known as an expert in interreligious dialogue and he's also a member of the Pontifical Council for the New Evangelization. With the appointment, Cardinal Robles assumes the leadership of one of Latin America's most influential archdioceses. The Guadalajara Seminary produces 1,500 priests annually, while according to census data, the region remains somewhat traditional, with more than 90% of residents self-identifying as Catholic. In other news from around the country, two U.S. Catholic evangelists have been appointed by Pope Benedict XVI to advise the newly created Pontifical Council for Promoting New Evangelization. They are Curtis Martin, founder and president of the Fellowship of Catholic University Students and a fellow at the Augustine Institute in Denver, and Ralph Martin, director of graduate theology programs in evangelization at Sacred Heart Major Seminary in the Archdiocese of Detroit, and the founding director of the International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Office in Rome. Of the 15 experts chosen, nine are clergy and six are lay Catholics. Maria Voci, who is president of the Focolari movement, was the one woman selected as an advisor. The majority of those chosen are professors from Europe and four have taught at Rome's Pontifical Lateran University. In their new positions as consultors, they will advise Vatican congregations or councils on matters under study and visit the Vatican once or twice a year for meetings. In news now from around the world, Archbishop Dominique Mimberti, the Vatican's top foreign affairs official, addressed members at the 18th meeting of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, or OSCE, which was held in Lithuania recently. The Archbishop said there may be more than 200 million Christians of different confessions who are in difficulty because of legal and cultural structures that lead to their discrimination. He said the celebration of an international day against persecution and discrimination of Christians might prove to be an important sign that governments are willing to deal with this serious issue. In September, the Lithuanian OSCE chairmanship had organized a conference held in Rome entitled Preventing and Responding to Hate Incidents and Crimes Against Christians. The Archbishop called that event successful and hopeful because it recognized the need for dialogue between Christians, other religious groups, and non-believers. He said another similar gathering is needed in the future. And finally in the news, the 80th annual procession in honor of the Virgin of Guadalupe was held recently in East Los Angeles. As it has been the tradition for the past eight decades, parish groups, decorated floats, equestrians, and indigenous dancers escorted the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe in a two-mile walk that ended at East Los Angeles College Stadium, where they gathered for the Mass at which Los Angeles Archbishop Jose Gomez presided. The procession is the oldest religious procession in Los Angeles that recalls Mary appearing to St. Juan Diego 480 years ago at Tipiac Hill in what is now the northern part of Mexico City. In his homily, Archbishop Gomez recounted the days when his whole family made a pilgrimage to the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City every summer. 
The Archbishop urged the crowd of 25,000 to immerse themselves in a deeper conversion and to view and help each other as brothers and sisters of the family of God. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.